a new let me know video on aliens i gotta pp first though why this place because transformative content In early 2007, this silent black and white video was uploaded by a user in a conspiracy and UFO-centric forum called Above Top Secret. The user claimed the video depicted a disc-shaped UFO outmaneuvering a fighter jet somewhere off the coast of Mexico in the mid-2000s. They had supposedly gained access to the video while serving on board a US aircraft carrier and claimed to have smuggled a potentially classified material off the ship. While some members of the forum chose to believe their story, others were not so easily convinced. For instance, the video was hosted on a website belonging to a group of German film students, which led some to denounce the clip as an attempted hoax. Even those who believed it could be genuine still complained that it was a totally uninspiring video of a fuzzy dot. Over a decade later, this long-forgotten video suddenly resurfaced as part of an article by the New York Times. The video was now linked to a secret government-funded program and was even corroborated by a credible eyewitness. What had initially been dismissed as a hoax turned out to be real. The video was said to depict a genuine encounter between US Navy fighter jets and some sort of unidentified craft. A second black and white video of a similar yet completely separate incident was also featured at the beginning of the article, except this one had sound. Dude, that, is drama, bro. that was really that weird. Was up, look on the ASA. Oh my gosh. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. The whole thing, dude. <laughs> These two videos, along with a third released a few months later, spread across the internet like wildfire. Comment sections and discussion threads were dominated by unrestrained speculation about aliens and paranormal phenomena. The skeptics, meanwhile, took it upon themselves to analyze every pixel in every frame in the hopes of uncovering some neglected clue that could identify these fuzzy blobs. Any lingering doubts about the video's authenticity vanished with the release of an official statement by the Department of Defense confirming that the videos depicted real events involving unidentified aerial phenomena. So, what exactly are we looking at? The first video was recorded off the northwestern coast of Mexico in late 2004. The story behind it has been recounted by more than a dozen the naval American officers, people, and it goes like this. In early November of 2004, a naval strike group led by the aircraft carrier the USS Nimitz was conducting pre-deployment exercises about 100 kilometers southwest of San Diego. Starting around the 10th of November, radar technicians aboard a guided missile cruiser the USS Princeton were puzzled by a series of unidentified radar tracks near San Clemente Island. The tracks did not resemble any known aircraft and would sporadically appear in groups of five. Before we go further on this, one, I absolutely believe that there are aliens. But, and that's a big but, I don't believe that aliens are humanoid. Or coming to Ohio to kidnap people would they go to Ohio why the f would anyone go to Iowa or Ohio let's be real and I also don't believe that any of our depictions of aliens are legitimate I think that we can't even with our we can't with our fucking primate brains comprehend what a civilization with uh, potentially the technological achievements of being able to go from a galaxy to ours we probably will never see them in our lifetimes and even then they might not even can they most likely aren't even his name is Hassan. like beings that we can comprehend it could, uh, like how do i describe it? it could be like a blob or not even a blob like not even colorless they could be colorless you, do you see what i'm saying 
like from a different dimension. These are things that I've mentioned a bunch of times. So it's just, it's just ridiculous. I think the more reasonable explanation for all of these UFO sightings is obviously weather balloons and numerous other things that most people can't comprehend. And also beyond that, actual government projects that they can get away with by saying, oh, top secret government projects that they can get away with by saying, oh, they're aliens. Oh, oh, oh we don't know what that is. It's an unidentified flying object. Five to 10 at a time. Suspecting a malfunction of some sort, the recently upgraded Spy-1 radar system was taken offline and recalibrated. Once the system was brought back online, however, the tracks had only become sharper. Among those on board were Senior Chief Operations Specialist Kevin Day, who was an expert on the Spy-1 radar system and had 18 years worth of experience at the time of the incident. Day observed firsthand how these unknown targets alternated between slightly strange and physics-defying maneuvers. Sometimes a cluster of tracks would appear out of nowhere and slowly drift south. They were flying too high to be birds, too slow to be conventional aircraft, and did not follow any commercial airways. Other times, they would seemingly descend from space and drop all the way down to sea level in mere seconds. These phenomena continued for several days, and every time they reappeared, the crew would run up to the bridge and use a pair of heavily magnified binoculars to see these tiny specks moving erratically in the distance. Funny. On the morning of November the 14th, the crew on board the USS Nimitz were gearing up for a scheduled air defense exercise. They had not yet been informed of the unusual returns picked up by the Princeton. It was a cloudless day and the sea was calm as pilots took to the skies. One of them was Lieutenant Colonel Douglas Kurth, who was flying a single-seat F-A-18 fighter jet when he was contacted by the Princeton. He was instructed to investigate an unknown target approaching from the south. The Princeton also wanted to know if- First few points you may have very intelligent, however, that bullshit you said at the end makes no sense. Aliens have been confirmed by Pentagon that they have visited the planet and make contact. Okay, brother. If he sure. carried any weapons, to which the answer was no. Kurth made his way to the specified coordinates, but did not pick up anything on sensors. As he looked down towards the ocean, however, his attention was immediately drawn towards a turbulent patch of water. Kurth claims to have seen a roundish disturbance on the ocean, which appeared as though something was submerged just below the surface. It reminded him of a submarine or ship slowly sinking into the ocean. The Nimitz strike group did include a nuclear-powered submarine named the USS Louisville. The Louisville was in the vicinity when Kurth made his observations, so the churning may indeed have been caused by a submerging submarine. Excuse me. If I'm not, sorry. then I'm whatever was in the I water managed to evade now detection by the Louisville's story. extremely sensitive sonar. Kurth was soon joined by a squadron of two tandem seats in F-18s, the lead aircraft of which was piloted by Commander David Fravor. Much like Kurth, Fravor claims to have seen a disturbance on the ocean, You're which wrong, he described Marlo. as having a vaguely cross-like shape. He thought it resembled a downed airliner and described its size as much larger than a submarine. While Kurth eventually circled back for the Nimitz, Fravor and his wingman decided to get a closer look. As they began their descent, they noticed a white, capsule-shaped craft moving erratically above the disturbance. At first, they thought it could be a helicopter, but there were no rotor blades. In fact, it was perfectly smooth. No markings, no exhaust, no protrusions of any kind. The UFO appeared to maintain a consistent altitude, but made rapid lateral movements with no visible means of propulsion. Aliens. According to Fravor, it was a bit smaller than an F-18 and resembled a giant mint of Tic Tac. As Fravor continued to descend, his wingman decided to maintain altitude and kept watching from above. Flying in a spiraling downward motion, Fravor was getting closer and closer until suddenly the UFO realigned its axis and began to climb at an incredible rate of speed. Both of them were now flying in a circle. The UFO was coming up while the F-18 was going down. In an effort to close the distance between them, Fravor made a final aggressive turn before the UFO rapidly accelerated up to hypersonic speed and disappeared in a matter of seconds. As they looked down towards the ocean, it was now perfectly calm. Okay, but what about the video? 
Well, so Fravor and his wingman made it back to the Nimitz. They landed and ran into a different flight crew preparing to head back out. They told them what they had seen and to be on the lookout for anything out of the ordinary. Soon thereafter, another tandem-seated F-18 took to the skies. This time, it was outfitted with an advanced targeting forward-looking infrared camera system. This AtFlir pod is controlled by the weapon systems operator seated behind the pilot uh -huh. and the backseat. My man's name is Lieutenant Chad Underwood. Of this flight was Lieutenant Chad Underwood. A few minutes after departing the hey, Nimitz, what's going on, Underwood Lieutenant detected Chad something Underwood. on his radar. The unknown target was directly ahead, a few tens of kilometers away. The target's behavior was erratic and unpredictable. Its altitude and airspeed were in constant flux. According to Underwood, it simply did not abide by the known laws of physics. At some point, Underwood managed to get a lock on the target with the Atflir camera. And this is when the much-publicized video was recorded. At the beginning of the video, we see a UFO being tracked in infrared. Underwood then switches to visible light, revealing an out-of-focus, rounded mass in the distance. He then switches back to infrared and alternates between two different zoom levels on multiple occasions. Not much happens until the very end of the video, when the UFO suddenly disappears off to the left-hand side of the screen. As the target was too far away to be seen with a naked eye, neither Underwood nor his pilot ever made visual contact. The Princeton continued to detect anomalous radar tracks for at least two more days, and according to Senior Chief Day, they eventually disappeared near the Mexican island of Guadalupe. Aliens, obviously! Isolation, utterly divorced from any and all surrounding context, this video is extraordinarily unremarkable. It's a fuzzy blob against a featureless background. It's only when you place it in the middle of these truly remarkable stories that the video itself becomes remarkable. When skeptics and debunkers claim that this is a distant airplane, I understand why many are so opposed to that explanation, because the witness accounts say otherwise. A distant airplane can't just zip around the sky as if gravity was non-existent. It doesn't make any sense. Unfortunately, we don't see any of those physics-defying maneuvers in the video. In fact, this fussy blob doesn't- It's not one of those skunk works planes, dude. What are you, crazy? They can't defy gravity. Those are just like- repurposed fucking 747s and shit. No, it's most likely some fucking drone project the government was working on and and now are, are saying that it's just a uh, what do you call it? Now now uh, people are saying that it's an alien or whatever. It's not do much of anything until the very end when it suddenly disappears off to the left hand side of the screen. Now, some claim this is due to a sudden acceleration by the UFO, but it could also be something as simple as the camera losing its target lock. It's difficult to tell. Underwood himself is uncertain about what happens at the end, as he never made visual contact. The witness accounts, meanwhile, are so extraordinary they are difficult to believe. If any regular person claimed to have seen a tic-tac-shaped UFO moving erratically in the sky, a few would listen. But when that same story is told by some of the most qualified observers on the planet, it makes you wonder. And it wasn't just one or two. These UFOs were either seen or tracked by dozens of experienced aviators and sailors for nearly a week. They were seen from multiple vantage points and tracked by one of the most sophisticated radar systems in the world. To think that all of them are lying, or all of them were deceived by some prosaic phenomena, seems absurd. At the same time, there is no way to verify what they're saying. We have no choice but to take them at their word. We don't have the radar data, the radio communication logs, nor any corroborating evidence. Well, except for this pixel-deficient footage, I guess. This is a deranged some of the witnesses claim there was actually a much longer and much higher resolution video than the one we see today. They claim to have seen this video on board the Princeton, and that the shape of the UFO was perfectly clear as it violently maneuvered around the screen. What's interesting about this claim is that when the video was first leaked online back in 2007, 
The anonymous leaker claimed they had four different versions of the video in their possession. Two of them were said to be shorter, but the fourth was said to be twice as long and supposedly showed more UFO movements. His name is Unfortunately, Hassan. this extended Take version has never box. seen the light of day. And if some of the witnesses are to be believed, it likely never will. You see, on the evening of November the 14th, all the footage and data from... Why would the government test secret drones within the radar range of a Navy strike group? That's not how you keep a secret. First of all, they could have been literally testing it against their own Navy. The American like, people are tired if they're testing, living. if they're testing like super advanced technology, they would literally test it against their own Navy. What better way to do it than if they accidentally horses get dropped, There's some horses then scouts. they, they horses have some scouts. sort of, they have some way of like keeping it a secret. Drones also can't defy gravity or any of the laws of civics. It's true, but you're not going to go and test it against the enemy. You're going to test it against your own Navy. You 100% would never, ever in a million years, um, you would never, ever in a million years test it anywhere else. You wouldn't do it against, like, commercial uh, fleets. You would do it against the Navy. And then this is exactly the outcome of that. We will never know what the exact, uh, what the exact details are, if that was the case. <laughs> From these events. What if it gets shot down, they'd be exposed? Yeah, that's the whole point. If it got shot down by the Navy, they could hold it under wraps. It got caught by the Navy and they kept it a secret for a long ass time and only revealed it. So that's literally the point I'm making. ...were supposedly erased. Witnesses claimed that two men arrived via helicopter who then collected the relevant data before having all the tapes and hard drives wiped clean. Witnesses from both the Nimitz and Princeton recall such visits and insist that nothing like it had ever happened before. This has under... I think he said it was like a tic-tac. Yeah, we have no proof that it was literally like a tic-tac or that it was motorless or it actually defied the law of physics beyond, beyond the qualified airmen who are flying around and have no way of comprehending what it is and could have greatly exaggerated the situation in the moment because they were shocked by what's going on while they're hitting insane speeds themselves i don't understand why this granular footage is the only thing we have to work on and you're thinking like no it's great it's definitely aliens i mean sure if you want to it's fun day I'll, I'll allow it but you are it just it just fires every rational synapse i have when i see stuff like this and i'm like this is there's a way easier justification for it understandably led to speculations of some sort of cover-up that these sightings were that of top secret military drones or aircraft while the u.s military is undoubtedly experimenting with all kinds of cutting-edge technology it is difficult to believe they possess gravity-defying hypersonic flying tic tacs if so they would possess technology so far beyond anything known to the public it would be akin to magic and this was back in 2004 uh, don't get me wrong 2004 was a magical time compared to current year but it was still aggressively 2004 flat ball from a disc to a ball right before your eyes catch it flatten it and let it fly flat ball i really don't know what to make of this story after reading watching and listening to so many interviews with the people who were there i'm left with a distinct impression that they're telling the truth the video, on the other hand, does little to support their claims. Sure, this fuzzy blob may be unidentified, but it's not unexplainable. The second and third videos were recorded off the southeastern coast of the United States in early 2015. While those who recorded the footage have yet to come forward, some of their crewmates and fellow pilots have. And according to them, the story goes like this. Here we go. In the summer of 2014, a naval strike group led by the aircraft carrier the USS Theodore Roosevelt was conducting pre-deployment exercises somewhere off the coast of Virginia. Much like with the Nimitz encounters, the first sign of trouble came in the form of anomalous radar tracks. Following a fleet-wide upgrade of aircraft radar systems, 
pilots had begun to pick up unidentified targets while conducting routine training missions. The tracks were initially dismissed as false positives, but their behavior was unlike anything they had seen before. Gravity-defying maneuvers, hypersonic velocities, and other mystifying shenanigans. Attempts to intercept these UFOs were initially unsuccessful. Lieutenant Danny Acoin claims that on two separate occasions he tried but failed to make visual contact. Then one day, a squadron is said to have narrowly avoided a mid-air collision with one of these UFOs. The two jets had been flying in tandem no more than a few tens of meters apart when something flew right in between them. That something was oddly described as a cube encased by a translucent sphere. Lieutenant Ryan Graves, who spoke to one of the pilots once they had landed, claims the experience had visibly spooked them. So much so, the squadron filed an official safety report. According to Graves, this was far from an isolated incident. These UFOs were allegedly seen by dozens of pilots for several months and could remain airborne for up to 12 hours at a time. Yet, despite growing concerns among the Roosevelt crew, training missions continued as if nothing was amiss. Okay, so it was a bird. That's pretty the crazy. American people are tired of women. A crazy bird. By early 2015, the Roosevelt strike group had made its way down to the coast of Florida, which is when the two now famous videos were recorded, both of which are said to be short clips taken from much longer and higher resolution footage. We don't know much about the circumstances as the officers involved have chosen to remain silent, but let's take a look at the first one. That's not an LNS though, is it? It's not. That is an LNS, dude. Well, if there's like another thing, it's rotating. So, there are a few things to unpack in this one. If we ignore the audio for a moment and focus solely on the visuals, the thing that immediately stands out is the apparent rotation of the UFO. I use the word apparent because some debunkers claim that this rotation is an optical illusion. You see, the Atflir pod is equipped with something known as a derotation mechanism. It's meant to counteract the rotation of the camera so that the orientation of the image stays the same also known as image stabilization. What may not be stabilized, however, are certain artifacts produced by the lens of the camera. You can even try this yourself. Aim a camera towards a light source, rotate the camera, stabilize the footage, and there you go. The orientation of the image is preserved while these spokes of light rotate along with the camera. So much like how the light from this light bulb is producing a lens flare, the infrared radiation from this UFO is said to be producing a lens glare. In other words, the bunkers claim it is the camera and thereby the glare which is rotating, not the UFO itself. While this explanation seems perfectly reasonable to my untrained eyes, uh, things get a bit more confusing once we bring back the audio. Well, if there's like another thing, it's rotating. If this rotation is merely the result of image stabilization, why would the two pilots fail to recognize it? Are they looking at it directly or are they looking at it through the camera? Because if the camera's fucking rotating, then they think it's rotating because they're, that's the only way they can figure it out. So no wonder they thought it was a rotation. What do you mean? Well, that's what we thought too. Just because they're pilots doesn't mean that they're not going to be doesn't mean that they're not susceptible to the same kind of shit that we are susceptible to. As such, surely they, if anyone, would know what that looks like. And they're not alone. Both Lieutenant Graves and Acoin believe it is the UFO which is rotating. Furthermore, an expert on the Atflare system has very plainly stated that this is not an optical illusion. But this is not the only puzzling comment made by the two pilots. There's a whole fleet of them, look on the ASA. Oh my gosh. They're all going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. 
So the radar is supposedly detecting a whole fleet of UFOs, which are all traveling crosswind. I mean, if what we're looking at is something prosaic, like the blooming exhaust of a jet engine, these comments don't make a whole lot of sense. I would love to hear what these two pilots have to say if they ever decide to come forward. Until then, all we can do is speculate. This video may seem very striking at first, but it is arguably the least interesting of the three. Once again, let's ignore the audio for a moment and focus solely on the visuals. Unlike the previous two, the UFO in this one is colder than its surroundings, so the ocean below is radiating more heat than whatever this is. It may look as though the UFO is traveling at high speed, but this is likely the result of parallax. In short, aircraft go fast, camera fixed on not so fast UFO, UFO appeared to go fast. Some say the UFO is near sea level and therefore the parallax explanation doesn't work, but we can actually derive its altitude using the numbers on screen and find that that is not true. Everything seen in this video is consistent with a balloon or some sort of debris floating in the wind. The commentary by the pilots, however, does once again introduce a bit of confusion. I mean, it seems odd for the pilots to be so excited over something so mundane, but without hearing from the pilots themselves- Bro, they're f pilots, like, they're not superhuman. They're just as susceptible to f up as everyone else is. I literally don't understand why it's like, it doesn't matter that they're highly trained, bro. What? Dude, you guys are so, you guys are so ridiculous. Oh, they're f highly trained. Oh, okay, never mind. Well, yeah, because they're f highly trained, it only happens once every uh, uh, 10 years or so, okay? There you go, there, there's your response. Else, we can do nothing but speculate. The person responsible for making these videos available to the public is a man named Lou Elizondo. Beginning in 2008, Elizondo was the head of a secret government-funded effort to investigate UFO sightings known as the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. By late 2017, however, Elizondo had grown so disillusioned with the government's lack of interest in the program's efforts ah. that he decided to resign. In his resignation letter, Elizondo writes that certain individuals within the government are staunchly opposed to UFO research, that inflexible mindsets and political contention essentially prevented him from doing his job. He portrays the government as virtually unconcerned about an issue which he believes could pose a threat to national security, so much so that he felt it necessary to resign in protest. This seemingly uncaring attitude was also noted by witnesses of both the Nimitz and Roosevelt encounters. For instance, Lieutenant Ryan Graves recalled how the commander of the Roosevelt strike group seemed completely unfazed by this video. On the day when it was captured, he supposedly looked at it for five seconds, then walked away without saying a word. Some of the senior officers on board the Nimitz and Princeton are said to have had an equally muted response. These are very bizarre reactions to potential airspace incursions. You'd think they'd want to make sure these UFOs are not some kind of threat. The near mid-air collision reported by one of the squadrons from the Roosevelt seems especially concerning. To account for this apparent disinterest, many point to the severe stigma surrounding the topic of UFOs. Regardless of how inaccurate it may be, the term UFO has, for many, become synonymous with aliens and spaceships. So much so, the government now favors the term UAP specifically to avoid this unwanted association. 
Whether sightings go unreported or uninvestigated, the argument is that people choose to look the other way because they're concerned about their reputation. No one wants to be seen as a nutcase and potentially lose out on a promotion. Others believe there could be something a bit more conniving at play, that no serious what action is taken you? because a highly advanced and top secret drone program. Oh my sunk. god, this is so Here funny. I am, I guess. Sag. Space plane, space plane is ready for launch at Atlas V. OTV is the nation's first unmanned space plane. Managed by the U.S. Air Force Rapid Capabilities Office, the Boeing-built X-37B is a highly flexible testbed platform. Motherfucker literally looks like a Tic Tac, dude. Stop. Stop. For a variety of on-orbit demonstrations, this reusable system allows hosted experiments to be returned, inspected, modified, and flown again. His name is Hassan. 2004 question mark yeah no boeing probably made this unmanned uh drone in the last 10 days actually right before they you know they you know boeing's boeing's projects if it's if it's released in 2020 it means that it was it was created and tested and operated literally yesterday it, they do it in one day usually so Graham is responsible for the sightings. Even some of the witnesses have entertained that possibility. For instance, Sean Cahill, who was the chief master at arms on board the Princeton, perceived the inaction of senior staff as a clear sign that the UFOs were known military assets. But as previously mentioned, it is difficult to believe such radical innovation could have taken place in absolute secrecy. We're talking about such advanced technology, it would barely make sense in a science fiction novel. Vehicles that can exceed the speed of sound without producing any sonic booms. Vehicles that can drop or climb to virtually any altitude in a matter of seconds. Vehicles that can violently change direction of travel as if inertia was a mere suggestion. None of that should be possible, yet dozens of trained observers claim they witnessed the impossible. The so you're, you're speaking about your opinions as though they're facts saying most likely. We truly don't know. Yeah, do you not comprehend what i just said when i say most likely i'm saying it's more likely than the alternative which are aliens are suspiciously just like humanoids and they use technology that's somehow so insanely mind shatteringly advanced but also still can be picked up by our simpleton radars like out of here i'm saying this is more likely even with the infinite possibilities Obviously, an infinite amount of possibilities means that anything is likely. Anything could be likely. I get it. I get where your criticism is there. I'm just giving you what my POV is because you asked me what my POV is. Least uncomfortable solution, I don't, I'm not saying I know more than you. simply not believe them. Sure, the witnesses are credible, but they're not incontrovertible. Everything from optical illusions to faulty equipment could be used to cast doubt on their extraordinary tales. And without any corroborating evidence, except for this nebulous footage, that is not a difficult task. As such, many government officials may not seem concerned because they genuinely believe there is nothing to be concerned about. Personally, I'm left feeling very conflicted. On the one hand, I find the witness accounts quite compelling. On the other, I find this grainy trilogy of dots in the sky somewhat underwhelming. Sure, the videos are fascinating, but they're also far too ambiguous to provide any decisive answers. I highly recommend that you seek out and listen to some of the witness accounts so that you can judge for yourself. This is very much a developing situation. By the time you watch this video, chances are more information will have been released. According to Elizondo, the Nimitz and Roosevelt encounters are just the tip of the iceberg. Sightings by military personnel are said to be commonplace, it's just that we rarely hear about them. I can only hope that His more evidence is, is released Hashan. in the near future, that and that at least one video depicts something inexplicable. Something that is unidentified because it defies explanation, not because it's too distant, too small, or otherwise too obscure. No, but something truly extraordinary. That's what I want to see.
Cause need, need, need my fantasy, need, need, 